Our people are moving smoothly, Sergeant. We got a good platoon, sir. All the work's paying off. Where's Lieutenant Miller? He should be here to protect our left flank by now. Here they come, sir. They're moving out of position, sir. The whole company will be exposed. All right, Sergeant, let's save what we can. Move the first squad to protect our left flank. On the go, sir. What's holding us up? Well, sir, if the aggressors are here, they're probably looking right down our throats. It's a poor position to be in, sir, without any cover. I'll decide where the aggressors are, Sergeant, if you don't mind. Borgman, did I give you my map? No, sir. Well, then you should have asked for it. Do I have to do everything myself? All right, move out! I'm the devil! Move, move out! out! Ah, Does it? That cuts Lieutenant Miller's cake right down the middle. His platoon is so bleak it's fouled up the whole company. Fall back! Arnold, you did this deliberately. Sir, you ordered me. Sergeant Arnold, fall back. Well, Lieutenant Miller took it pretty bad when he and his wife lost their kids, sir. Well, maybe you'd be better off at a desk job till he gets over it. Well, maybe. A couple months of administrative work, I'll try and swing it. Oh, third platoon, sir. Rice, over here. Two in charge, you take over here. We're pulling back along the wire, sir. Lieutenant, over there, among the um, theoretical dead and dying, is Lieutenant Miller. He is to report to me immediately. I'm going to relieve him of his command. As of that moment, you are in command of his platoon. Sir, my own platoon. Your platoon, Sergeant, will take charge of your men. Sir, battalion maneuvers are in just 10 days. I spend months working my people into shape for it. If I have to take an inefficient, disorganized group... You will not take an inefficient, disorganized group into those maneuvers, Lieutenant. Sir, 10 days just isn't enough time. Well, in my judgment, it is. And I'll expect you to do it, or you may find yourself up for grabs right behind Lieutenant Miller. Aye, aye, sir. Attention! Nobody's gonna be dismissed until you guys stop talking. You men are out of tension. There's normal conduct for these people, Sergeant. Sergeant, I want to see the squad leaders in my office in five minutes. Dismiss the platoon. All right, sir. All right, first squad. We're waiting on you now. You NCOs are the heart and guts of a platoon. If there's a morale problem, you should be the first to know why and what to do to correct it. No opinions whatsoever, huh? It's hard to put your finger on it, sir. Well, perhaps so, Sergeant, but we are going to put our finger on it, and we are going to straighten it out, and fast. I'll see you men tomorrow. Borgman, I want to talk to you.
Well, anything's better than Lieutenant Miller. You want to bet? This one looks like a hard nose to me. They weren't much help, were they? Well, it's going to take them a little time for them to loosen up to a new officer, sir. Yeah, well, I expect my platoon sergeant to level from the beginning. Well, sir, the men feel what was expected of them kept changing from day to day. Men need a guideline. The firmer it is, the less it changes, the more they're going to be willing to shape up to it. Take a little time, sir. We're going to do it in just 10 days. 10 days. That's all. You're kidding, sir. Do you see a smile, Sergeant? Sir, in my honest opinion, there is no way you can shape up the second platoon in that amount of time. Could you tell me where room 108 is, please? Uh, Lieutenant Miller? That's right. Uh, they checked out this morning. I'm sorry I don't have a forwarding address. Thank you very much. You're welcome. time, isn't it? Well, I'm not embarrassed. I haven't done anything wrong. Oh, you're not if it matters much. <laughs> I didn't want to seem forward. Uh, well, uh, come, come on, fix it or something. Well, look, you'll have to raise your arms a little. Careful. Yeah. Now, if I can get this thread through here. I missed. Oh, don't get nervous. <laughs> well, I'm not nervous. You'll look, you'll have to stop breathing. Oh. Reese? Is there anything wrong? Oh, Arnold, uh, I was trying to repair this, you see. Uh, if you'd like to do it yourself. No, no, you go right ahead. Well, honey, if you hadn't taken the key. I was gone about two minutes. I can't trust you to stay out of trouble for two minutes. Mm -mm. There you go. Just don't move too suddenly. Oh. You see, Arnold, she was trying to dive don't into look the. I'm so worried, Lieutenant. She's my sister. Maurice, <laughs> Lieutenant Rice. Lieutenant? You're kidding. Len's always writing home about them. Where are his horns and pitchfork? <laughs> Thanks, loads. Well, actually, I don't wear them off duty. Oh, that's good. I'll be back as soon as I get a sweater. Don't go away. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Lieutenant. First chance we've had to see each other for a couple of years. She's staying the week. I thought she'd like this place. Well, she certainly very is a pretty, a bit kooky, and very aggressive. If you stay, she might embarrass you. I'll risk it. Perhaps I should warn you, Lieutenant. I'm one of a strange new breed, the civilian soldier, or in this case, Marines. I enlisted for one reason, to fulfill my military obligation. So? So when I'm on duty, I play the game. When I'm off duty, I revert to being an individual again. I say whatever I think in any way I want to, whomever I please. Well, I don't think there's anything wrong in that, Sergeant. After all, you're entitled to your own opinion. Well then, Lieutenant, here's something that's always bugged me. Take you and I, for instance, here in our civvies, without our impressive gold bars or our imposing chevrons. Here, I deeply resent the fact that I am automatically expected to assume an attitude of respect, to address as sir a young man who's probably no more mature than myself, 
No better educated, no more intelligent, no more destined for high places or... Well, to be quite frank, I have never regarded myself as a distinguished gray-haired elder. In fact, sometimes it makes me as uncomfortable as it does you. But that's the system. That's the system. As good old Genghis Khan used to say. Well, I don't think that comparison holds much water, Sergeant. For the past six months, the second platoon has been under the command of an overbearing neurotic. Now, you want to know what your problem is? That's it. Digging out from under the debris left by one Lieutenant Miller. Uh, you might be the kindest, fairest, most reasonable man in the Corps, but you've got a whole platoon of skeptics who think you're probably just an extension of Lieutenant Miller. And what if I prove differently? In 10 days? Why 10 days? Oh, now, don't make the same mistake he did. We're not dumb. We can read the battalion maneuver schedules, and we can pretty well figure out why the captain put you here. Then why can't the platoon use the same reasoning processes in judging me? Because there's a brick wall 10 feet high between you and them. Officers and enlisted men are still separated by a military concept that's as archaic as the divine right of kings. Now, you get rid of that wall. You prove that you realize that you're just as human and fallible as the rest of them, and that maybe some of them might have a pertinent question or a good idea once in a while. You do that, and you just might be surprised how fast you could get through to a platoon. Hey, you two. Here I am, all put together again. Sit. Is he, uh, boring you? Not a bit. I've been trying to explain the difference between officers and enlisted men. Mm. Viva la difference. Oh? Mm. Lieutenant Rice, sir, why don't you tell her uh, the chances of, oh, say, a second lieutenant fraternizing with the sister of one of his sergeants? Well, the problem seems to be I'm a superior creature. How fascinating. Yeah, but you're a peasant. And there's no telling where that could lead, right, Lieutenant? Even uh, intermarriage. Hey, are you two kidding on the square? You couldn't take me out, even if you wanted to? Well, your brother is exaggerating just a little. Prove it. I will. Here. Tomorrow at 6. A.M. or P.M. I like that attitude. There now, that'll stick to your ribs, unfortunately. Stan, do you think the men in your platoon like you? I mean, as a person. I never particularly thought about it. Why? Well, I've been thinking. Don't you feel you could get more out of them with, say, a good personal relationship? You think you're turning the old charm on that platoon of yours? Well, Miller went to one extreme. Why can't I counter it by going a little the opposite way? I think you're going out of your head. Am I? Well, not long ago, your platoon and mine, dressed in civvies, they were the equal of anyone else. They join up, and because somebody pins a go bar in somebody hold else's it. Now, just hold it a second. Look, maybe that bar doesn't actually make me something special, but I'm going to do my best to make them believe it does. I think you could be wrong. And I think you're headed for trouble. Big trouble. Marie, button that jack and get the butts off the stick. Come on! Kegels, one of these days you're going to learn how to tie down a buck properly. And I just might be promoted to full turn. Pressure. What's with him all of a sudden? Hey, hey. Sergeant, I want to talk to these men. Follow the lieutenant. Oh! All right, this is our first day working together. I want you to understand exactly what I expect from you and what you can expect from me. 
Now, first, I'm going to tell you something you may already know. This platoon is a disgrace to the Corps. I know it, you know it, the entire battalion knows it. It's going to change, and fast. But I'm not going to crack down on anybody, not yet. I'm going to assume that you know as well as I do how a Marine conducts himself, carries himself, and responds to orders. As of now, we're starting out fresh. I'm going to gamble that if I stay off your necks, there's not a man here who won't have the courage to decide for himself. He's got the training, the brains, and the intelligence to be a Marine. Sir. Go ahead, Sergeant. It's a little hard for the men to feel they're starting out fresh, sir, when the whole platoon is still on a one-week restriction to post. Well, as of now, Sergeant, that restriction is off. Sir, Lieutenant Miller did not order the restriction. The skipper did. All right, that's all. Hey, hey, hey! Carry on. 24 hours, and you already have that platoon shaped up to the point they Sir. feel they've earned some special favor, huh? Some gesture of appreciation from their company commander? Sir. Vice, I would like to ask you just one question. Are you trying to bribe the second platoon? No, sir, I'm not. Well, your request has all the earmarks of it. Captain, I wish you'd let me explain. I wish you would. Sir, as the captain was well aware, you've handed me a tough and thankless assignment, sir. This restriction to post is, is just another chip on the men's shoulders, sir. A problem I can do without right now. Now, you don't feel this is going to do them more harm than good? No, sir, I do not. Well, I don't necessarily agree with you, but it's your problem and your platoon, and you'll sink or swim with your decision. My restriction on the second platoon is rescinded. Sarge, you're kidding. Yeah, I kid about everything. You heard me. As of tonight, Liberty cards are back on the board. Great news. Yeah, 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 yeah. OK, Great. now. The lieutenant pitched one for us. Now let's pitch one for him. Right. 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 going on here, Corporal? Uh, we're waiting to see Lieutenant Rice, sir. Why? Well, he told us to, sir. He said if we had any personal problems, you know, anything bothering us, that we should come and talk to him about it. Mm-hmm. Well, what is your particular problem, Corporal? Well, I got a wart on my foot, sir. Oh, I see. What is your problem, Private? Well, it's a, a girl trouble, sir. See, she hasn't written to me in a couple of weeks now, and... Well, I just kind of like to talk it over with someone. Yes, I see. Well, the lieutenant is very understanding. <clears throat> sure is, sir. Saturday night in a bachelor apartment? Do nice girls go there? Well, I can show you a certificate of honorable deportment from, uh, let's say... 30, 40 young ladies. Well, that would be bragging, wouldn't it? Mm, plus that much good conduct would make you seem terribly, terribly dull. On the other hand, my brother reports that the men think you're quite unusual. A soul of honesty, fairness, and good judgment. Agreed. My judgment is flawless. They say you're uh, quite popular. I also barbecue a wild steak. I bet you do. Tomorrow night? Mm. I'd love to, but I can't. It's my last week in here, and I promised my brother I'd have dinner with him. I can't let him down. All right. 
on the other hand, I... I could bring him along. No, uh... I think that maybe you and he... Now, let me tell you a secret about my brother. With all his fine theories and college degrees, he's just enough of a snob to be delighted that his boss is interested in his sister. And if his sister is a woman, and she is, and his boss is really a boss, and I hope he is, We'll have him fed and tossed out by 9 o'clock. I, uh, I think I owe him a steak at that. Sergeant. Hey, Lieutenant. I thought we were supposed to learn something about defense today. Well, I guess we're learning it's in equal parts. Patience and sweat, Private Cagle. Get back to your digging. Yes, sir. Sir? Sir, my men are digging at solid rock. Now, couldn't we move about 20 feet further out? Lavona, you shag back up there and tell those daisy pickers of yours to dig in where they were told. And stop bothering the lieutenant. Corporal. You see those open fields across that river bed? Yes, sir. Well, I put your squad in position to cover that approach. I get it, sir. So you tell the men I'm counting on them. You bet I will. Your squad's dug in, sir. Defensive positions. Look, sir, the other platoons are getting all the action. Now, couldn't we just punch on up through the riverbed and hit him from the rear? Sergeant Arnold. Hold it, Sergeant. It's not a bad idea. Well, now, I've been thinking it out, sir. We do have permission to scout the area, right? If I think it's advisable, yes. Then look, sir. Here's the main element of Harrison's aggressors. Here's Bravo, main element, and the wash. Now, it gets narrow up at that end, but down here where it's wide, it takes a whole platoon to cover it. Harrison's not gonna need more than a squad. I think I see what you're getting at. Looks good to me. Me too, sir. Well, if we can knock out this squad here before they fall back, I... Right, I'll... she'll be wide open all the way up. Let's try it, sir. Should beat sitting around here all day. OK. Sergeant Arnold, you take your squad in deep. You stay concealed until the aggressors get through the main ambush and fall on them from the rear. Aye, aye, sir. Take your position. You think I made a mistake? You asking me to cast a vote, too, sir? Knock it off, Sergeant. Open fire! Runner. Sir. I want you to get a message to Captain Rambridge. You tell him we've engaged and captured the aggressor force. If he wants to push through, it's wide open. Yes, sir. There's not a platoon in the battalion could have done it better. They're really learning, these boys. Yes, sir. They're learning something, all right. Well, medium or rare? Medium rare. Mm, fine. Have them on in a minute. Can't rush a fire. Actually, hibachis aren't very well designed for barbecuing. 
Now, what you need precisely is an increased oxygen supply, more vents from below. This would give a hotter fire, which means Why don't you try uh, fanning it with a magazine or something? Highly inefficient, but I'll try. He has a theory on just about everything. Well, he's very bright in uh, some areas. Mm, I've never known him to lose an argument. It's just as I thought. Makes a lot of smoke, but it doesn't help the fire much. So I guess we'll just have to wait. Part of it's the way Bill stacks his charcoal. He gets things going, and then nothing happens. Yes, I see what you mean. We'll just have to have patience. Well, why don't you and I go out and make sure the fire doesn't go out? Did Bill explain how we did it to them today? May start an entire new trend in military history. Oh, here we go again. You know, I don't think she appreciates the way this system of yours has really worked out. Cheers to the glorious second platoon. Military democracy in action. You know something, Bill? The men in the platoon have really started to dig you. Mm. That's nice. And do you know why? Because for the first time, they feel someone's asking them to do something rather than just ordering them. They feel a part of things. Things are being explained to them. The old Captain Bly, Captain Quig concept is now a thing of the past. That's a pity. Women. They just don't understand democracy. I don't think they want to. Well, I'll go check the salad. Uh, did you rub the bowl with garlic buds? Yes. I rubbed the bowl with garlic buds. How about, uh, starting over again tomorrow night, huh? Oh, excuse me. I, uh, didn't realize there was any... I, uh... Uh, Larissa Arnold, this is Stan Harris, my roommate. My compliments, Mr. Rice. Uh, Lynn Arnold, this is Stan Harris, my roommate, her brother. How do you do? Hi, right, Stan. How about a burger? We got plenty. Uh, oh, no, no, I don't want to butt in. I'll... Well, don't be silly. You got to eat. It's no trouble. Why not? Four is no more trouble than three, is it? Um, uh, why don't you two get things ready, and uh, Larissa and I will go out and handle the burgers. Fine, fine. Go ahead and get washed up. Right. I got the salad here. We'll get out some ice cubes and chill another bottle of wine. My brother's a swell guy. I love him, but there are times when I could clobber him. Is it true that um, officers can't hit enlisted men? Yep. Pity. And I think I could have been out in the field tonight. Touche. You going to be with us long, Larisse? No, tomorrow's my last day. I wish I could stay. You know, Bill's mentioned your name to me a number of times, and I can't figure out where. <laughs> well, he's probably referred to me as Sergeant Arnold. Sergeant? Yeah, I'm a squad leader in his platoon. Oh, oh, I see. Wait a minute. Is something wrong? No. Well, now, I'm just wondering if Lieutenant Harris here is upset at having just eaten with an enlisted man. Let's drop it, fellas, shall we? Why? Should I be? <sighs> That's very generous of you, sir. That's out of line, Arnold. It's a joke, Bill. Relax. Well, it's getting later than I thought. You gonna stay for a while, or do you want me to drive you home? No, I, I'd better come along. Yes, uh, you'd like me to do the dishes? No, there's not much to do. Uh, thanks anyway. We said something uh, about tomorrow. I'll call you later. You want some more coffee? No, I've had it. Now look, in my whole life, no one's ever called me a snob. I'll sign a paper 
admitting that there are countless numbers of enlisted men, many in my own platoon, who are better conversationalists, more intelligent, nicer guys. Look, that guy was out of line, Bill. Well, he might have been out of line, but you still seemed a little surprised when he identified himself. Well, actually, I'm a little surprised to think that you're rewriting the book. Well, maybe I am. But let me tell you, it's working. I have never seen a platoon snap into shape like this one has. There's got to be a bug in there somewhere. Doesn't there? All I know is it's working. I'm in. Lieutenant Rice reporting as ordered, sir. How did it go on the range today, Lieutenant? Very good, sir. We raised the platoon average some 12 points. Hmm. That was quite a spectacular stroke yesterday, cleaning out that gorge the way you did. Yes, sir. Thanks to Sergeant Arnold, sir. Yes, you mentioned that there. So it was uh, Sergeant Arnold who suggested that particular maneuver, huh? Well, uh, we all felt it was a good idea, sir. Oh, you all felt it was a good idea, I see. I guess you're pretty pleased with the way the second platoon is progressing, is that right? Yes, sir, I am. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not. Now, yesterday, Sergeant Arnold made a suggestion, and you all thought it was a good idea. So you took a chance. You gambled that Harrison wouldn't push his way through that gorge in company force. Because if he had, he'd have gone right through you. Yes, sir, but he didn't. Mm hmm Pretty hard to argue with success, isn't it? Yes, sir, it is. Well, not for me, Lieutenant, it isn't. Well, that was not a tactically sound maneuver. And just because you pulled it off once does not change that concept one iota. Sir, it was my decision. I Was it, Lieutenant, your decision? Or did the entire second platoon help you to decide? Would you still have taken that gamble if you were commanding the third platoon, for instance? Sir, I don't really know. Well, I do. The answer is no. Now, there's a peculiar odor coming from your platoon, Lieutenant, and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't understand, sir. In what respect? Your relationship with the men. I am not quite sure whether you're commanding a military unit or a community drive. Well, that's not quite fair, sir. Look at our record. When I ask some men to do something... I... When you what? When I ask some men to do something, sir... I... That's what I thought you said. All right, now let's translate this into combat conditions. Will your system work there? Will you ask these intelligent, logical, reasonable acquaintances of yours to follow you into an attack when their intelligence, logic, and reason tells them that they may not come out of that attack alive? Or perhaps you'll sit them down and have a discussion with them. Tell them why they've been chosen, why this particular hill should be taken, and why that particular parallel should be held. Now, even if you had the time, the chances are 100 to 1 that you have an answer. To men in the field, combat is insanity. Now, whether you're in charge of a platoon, or a battalion, or a whole regiment, you spend most of your time having the good faith and hope that somebody up above knows what they're doing. And those people up above have the good faith and hope that your men will follow your command instantly and instinctively. All right. I'm going to switch your training schedule. I have a special night field exercise. Now, get your people ready. Aye, aye, sir. I'm going to give you a taste of all that rice. We're going to find out what kind of a platoon you've really built. Maybe you're going to find out what the little ounce of gold on your collar is all about. Aye, aye, sir. Now you know as much as I do. Let's dress it down. Second material present, kind of a sook. Okay, Sergeant, let's move out. Right. Hey. Sling. Home. Now, when we count cadence, I want it to rattle the windows around here. 
necessarily agree? Well, they're going to find themselves playing a different game tonight, Lieutenant. The pressure's on. Sorry, Lieutenant. This bridge was destroyed by aggressor aircraft. We'll just go around it. Well, now you see, Lieutenant, there was a flash flood. And that dry wash that you see down there is now a raging torrent. We'll have to detour over a mile. Hmm. Well, it looks like we'll have to double time to stay on schedule, Lieutenant. Yeah, I would kind of say it looks that way. Mm-hmm. All right, moving back to where we came. That's the double time. Let's go! Back it up, back there. Lieutenant, there are no rations in this trailer, sir. It's empty. What's going on here, Corporal? There are supposed to be field rations in there. I don't know anything about that, sir. Uh, Captain Rambert just told me to drive out and tell you that War is hell, sir. You're under artillery fire, Lieutenant. All right, double time, move out. Oh, come on. Oh, 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 oh. Let's take a break. Take five. What are we doing clear up here, sir? Yeah, I thought the we Look, I don't have time to explain that. Now listen. From now on, we're in aggressive territory. We'll not be able to run into anything. I feel our way through here. I want the point out 100 yards. I'll take the point, sir. All right, Sergeant. Remember, we don't want to fight. Understood? Right. OK, first squad, on your feet. Hey, Sergeant. Come on, we're moving out. Private. Where can I find Lieutenant Farrell? On down the road, sir, about a mile. All right, thank you. Sergeant Arnold. Fat's in the fire now, Sergeant. I told him to avoid contact. Maybe he's trying on a new maneuver, sir, like the other day. Well, it looks like they have committed themselves. They certainly have, sir. Take a break. What happened out there? Well, we, we sighted one of their outposts, and I thought, I thought that's all it was. You attacked it? Well, I figured if we could knock it out, we could we'd just walk right through. But there was a couple of others that we didn't see. 
Yeah. Well, what's it gonna be, sir? I don't know, Borgman. If we try to punch our way through, we'll just get bogged down. If we start feeling our way back, well... In any case, there just isn't enough time. What do you think? At this point, I don't think anything, sir. It's all up to you. That's right, Sergeant. It's up to me. That hill would be a tough climb with full pack, even in broad daylight, wouldn't it? Sergeant, I want you to call all the NCOs up here. I want to talk to them now. Aye, aye, sir. Pass the word. NCOs in the front. Now! Sir? Yeah. The men are really starting to complain. We've been going That's tough. What's that, sir? I said that's tough, Corporal. Yes, sir. Arnold, Tracy, first and third squads will take off their packs. They will go up and over that hill and they'll come down on the bridge from behind. Second squad will start falling back immediately, carrying extra gear. Bill, this just won't work. Man, they've had it physically. They don't have anything left for this. They won't be carrying packs, Sergeant. Hey, what is this, Bill? You're pulling a Lieutenant Miller on us? Sergeant, hereafter my name is Lieutenant Rice. Remember that. Yes, sir. Now you people listen to me carefully. Tell it to your men. I'm only going to say it once. You'll bear two things in mind. You are Marines. Our condition here is simulated combat which means that the test of what we're doing here, it's not that it's fun or exciting or that you agree with it, or even that it makes sense to you. In fact, it's likely to be a miserable evening. We're going to do some things that nobody thinks we're able to do, plus quite a few things that you yourselves don't think you can do. And any man who delays in obeying any order had better be able to back it up with a hospital report proving him physically incapacitated. And I will not, I repeat, I will not accept fatigue as an excuse. And the only response I want to hear from now on is, yes, sir. Sergeant Arnold, you'll set the pace at that hill. And if I have to run over you halfway up, well, well, you wish I hadn't. Bugman, form up and let's move them out of here. Come on, on the double, let's go. Arm in the squad, we move. Come on, let's go. Fire it up. Are you strong? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> That's the last of the coffee. It's been over two hours now. I don't get it. Well, are you sure they haven't outflanked you, Lieutenant? Oh, not a chance, sir. The only place they might have squeezed through is the far side of the valley over there. I've got a patrol feeling around. Maybe they've uh, gotten lost. It's happened before out here. Uh, well, I'm not going to stay up all night on a snipe hunt. Uh, good night, Lieutenant. Good night. Now me, just for looks, I'll take a Black Angus over a Holstein any day. Say, have you ever seen a, oh, say, 50 Black Angus spread out on a bright green hillside? Especially on a rainy day. Aren't you men supposed to be guarding this bridge? Uh, no, sir, sir. We're dead. Lieutenant Rice's men killed us about 15 minutes ago and blew up the bridge. Well, I'll be. 
Morning, sir. Morning. You wouldn't be uh, waiting for the second platoon to report in, would you, sir? That's why I'm here, yes. Well, even if they try to hike it, they're blocked by F Company. Well, unless they detoured over the hog back. What night? Well, let me see, they're uh, two hours late. The first sergeant's giving 10 to 1 odds that they'll have to go out in trucks and get them. And no takers. How about if I buy you a cup of coffee, Captain? Count Kenan! Two! One! Two! Three! Four! Count Kenan! Two! One! Two! Three! Four! One! Two! Three! Four! One! Two! Three! Four! Well, what do you men think of you now, Lieutenant? I don't know, sir. Think that they have any less uh, respect for you? I don't think so. I'll tell you, one of the hardest lessons that this profession has to teach is the impersonality of command. I know sometimes it makes us appear rather cold and unfeeling and arbitrary. And since we're all human, none of us wants to feel like that. But we can't expect the men to do something because they owe us. Or because we won some sort of a popularity contest. Or even because we make sense to them. Because if we do, we're sunk. You can't request obedience, Rice. You can't even bargain for it. It's something that you must command. Incidentally, the company clerk called said there was a message for you from Miss, uh, well, Reese Arnold, something about her last night in town. Oh, yes, sir. It's uh, Sergeant Arnold's sister, sir. Are you blocking out another problem for yourself, Lieutenant? No, sir. I, I have confidence to... Uh, Put in the captain's words, there are certain instinctive, instantaneous command responses, which, uh... I have the situation under control, sir.